Qualcomm just announced the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform. The new processor able to power next generation of gaming devices, included this handheld console made in collaboration with Razer. Hey, Ty here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. You might ask, what does I have to do with VR? Well, I'm glad you did, because this chipset might actually power the next generation of VR headsets. Let's talk about it. All right, here we are. So if you don't know about Qualcomm, that's a company that's making pretty much all the chipsets, the processors inside all the standalone headsets that we have right now, like HoloLens 2, it was on the Oculus Go, the Oculus Quest, and of course the Oculus Quest 2 right now with the XR2 chipset, something made directly for XR. I mean, it's in the name. And after the big success of these headsets, and no surprise that they're still working on XR to make new processors. Also, we had recently a press briefing with actually a big commitment by them to actually create a new platform to evolve their XR endeavor. Yes, they're 120% on it. So the fact that they're actually creating a new platform of gaming devices, it's very interesting indeed because we also have new VR headsets that have to come very soon. And well, they're gonna need more power to actually boost all the different sensors and the new screens and stuff that we're gonna have in the future. Yes, I'm looking at you, Project Cambria. So the XR2 is already incredible, super focused directly on XR, of course, but it's based on the Snapdragon 855. That is some last generation stuff right now. In the market, we have the 888, and this is gonna be the next generation over that one. And these are gonna add also many of the features that we're gonna need in the next generation VR headsets. One of those is variable ray shading and different wireless connections. Talking about raw performance, Qualcomm promises that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 will offer up to 20% better performance and 30% more power efficiency over the last year model. Also because it's gonna build on four nanometer instead of five nanometers. But the other interesting thing is that the new Andreno GPU is gonna deliver also 30% faster graphics with a 25% better power efficiency always compared to the 888. So that means that it's gonna be a big gap compared to the XR2 that we have right now. It's gonna support 4K resolution up to 144 Hertz, plus the support for 10-bit HDR. That would be something amazing in a VR headset. And pair that with all the OLED displays that we saw like in the Vario Aero, and uh, that would be incredible. I kissed my finger. Now there are three major things in the announcement that makes it very, very interesting also on the VR standpoint. Well, the first one is that Boz and Qualcomm actually had a meeting in uh, the Oculus workspace and uh, well, they were talking about the future of it and they're gonna keep using the new Qualcomm processors also in the next generation of the VR hardware. The second one is in the announcement of this held out console with Razer directly that is gonna have a USB Type-C to power future XR headsets. What are those? Well, this could be also all the viewers that Qualcomm was talking about it a year ago. They're gonna be able to use in conjunction with the XR1 on the viewer and the XR2 or better processors like the one that we saw right now. So that means having a bigger screen or using this health device actually as a computing unit of your VR experience. That one means more headsets, more comfortable, of course, that will use the power of an external GPU and CPU to actually deliver all our experiences. Something similar to what we have with the Vive Flow right now. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna be able to connect this Vive Flow to this Qualcomm device. That would be absolutely incredible. I was actually talking about the fact that the Steam Deck and the Vive Flow would be the perfect fit and well, this works as well. But a third point is actually the variable ray shading and something that is very important indeed because it's gonna let this processor actually power all the different stuff that we saw on PC VR already, but they didn't arrive quite yet. And we're talking about foveat rendering with eye tracking, for example, and being able to have better performance actually rendering the right part of the frame every time. So what you're looking at of the most important parts of a frame are gonna be at a higher resolution and what you actually don't need or what's actually Blend texture and stuff are gonna be a lower resolution. And that is gonna improve, of course, the performance to have a better games and stuff, retaining the same picture quality, pretty much. And this has to be supported, not just on the software level, but also on the hardware level. So you need a processor able to actually support it. And the interesting thing, the amazing thing, is that these processors from Qualcomm are gonna be able to do it and deliver. 
if you connect also the dots, we know that all the future VR headsets are gonna pretty much have eye tracking because we need better performance, of course, and also we need a better social interaction and all the other different sensors, something that we saw also on the Project Cambria directly in the Connect announcement. And while putting together all the dots, it seems like the right fit. Now, we don't know if this is gonna be called Gen 8, Gen 1, or it's gonna be the XR3 because probably they're gonna make a new version just for the XR headsets like they did with the XR1 and they did that with the XR2 for the 855. So probably we're gonna have something new with a different name. This is the base of these new developments of processors directly from Qualcomm that are gonna also arrive at VR headsets or we're gonna be able to use directly with our XR viewers using maybe our console, handheld, or something like it. All I want though is something that is gonna run Skyrim VR uh, portable because lately I'm playing it again and oh my God, how I love the game, it's incredible. But let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you excited about this new Qualcomm platform? Do you expect it to be something like this in the next generation of VR headset? I think that this is gonna be it. Uh, maybe it's gonna have a different name, but yeah. They are really investing a lot. They are fully committed on XR, and for sure, we're gonna see something in the next processor in the next generation of VR headsets. Because the XR2 has already like over two years. And because we're talking about future stuff, let's talk about something that probably never gonna arrive, the Deca gear. Now, um, there was some rumors on the internet that the project has been scrapped completely and they're not gonna deliver. They actually delivered the Deca Move. It was a very nifty uh, accessory and I actually loved that thing. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't never super confident about this Deca Gear stuff. If you watch my first video and all the video about it, you can tell that I was kind of saying like, be careful, this stuff usually don't see the light of the day because there's a lot of different things. Making VR headsets is complicated. And well, uh, we saw also what happened with Pimax and stuff. They were super late. And uh, yeah, small companies, when they deliver, is just amazing, but it's very, very hard indeed. So uh, I don't know if this has been like canceled on stuff. Everything looked very interesting. I'm just very sad that there was all this hype around that was created by some people and uh, and now many people that fell in that hype are in this situation where they don't know if it's gonna arrive. It was supposed to arrive in March this year, by the way. Yes, COVID and stuff, but that wasn't really the reason. We knew from the very beginning that it was going to be delayed because it didn't seem like real. And uh, well, yeah, I was right. Uh, I hate to be right sometime, but I was right. Uh, that was over like hyped, over, promised and uh, yeah, right now I remain super cautious about it. That's why I never talked about it again after the first video because I thought that there was too much hype around and uh, you know, just talking about it is already something to create hype and makes uh, like people like still think that it's gonna arrive and stuff. Be careful with this stuff over here. Uh, this might be a lesson for some people that might be maybe a luck for others. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's hope they're gonna deliver because we need more VR competition. That's for sure, but it has to be done right. Not just in a hype machine. People are leaving the company there. So the project is still there apparently, but weird situation, we will see. Uh, I'm gonna keep you updated if I know something, but yeah, I didn't want to talk too much about it during all this year. I saw a lot of hype, please calm down. That, that, it's just a headset, okay? Let me know if you think about it in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like, please like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you did love the channel, so the join button down there, little bit further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons and who joined the channel, of course, for the support, it's super appreciated. And uh, yeah, I see you guys in the next video. Next week, I'm gonna review the Pico Neo 2, another XR2 headset. Look at that. Ciao.